Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome back to the Netherlands. I am here for the month of June, and then having a fantastic time, and in these last few days before leaving, I decided it was time to bring a little slice of that plant world home with me, and that is in the form of a hammer print. If you joined last week, you know that I looked at the hollyhock, which is a flower that grows everywhere here in the urban areas. And I was lucky enough to sample some from an artist friend of mine in Den Haag. I brought them back. We did a little testing on some ice printing, but today I'd like to take some of those full blooms and do tataki zom which is the art of hammer printing. We've looked at that a few times here at Color Quest, but I thought some of those beautiful hollyhock might make wonderful prints on cotton. Let's get started. So hammer printing is such an easy way to get started with echo printing or botanical printing. It is also such a fantastic thing to do when you're on the move and you're traveling. You might not have access to a heat source or a way to steam print. If you have a hammer, a rock, or anything that you can pound plant material into fiber, including paper, you can take prints of where you're traveling from or at least the flora in that area. It has been something I've done for several years now and it just ends up being such a special way to capture some of the natural color while you're on the road. And the hollyhock here are so spectacular. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you the supplies that I have here. And remember, I'm on the road. so. Some things are not going to be exactly the way I might do them in my home studio, but always looking to encourage you to explore and experiment even when you're away from your home dye studio. Let's take a look at the supplies I'm going to use today. So here are the hollyhock that I harvested from my friend's garden outside of her studio beautiful dark hollyhock. These are not the black hollyhock, but they're pretty deep and rich in their color. We also got this medium vibrant pink, as well as these flowers that I just think are stunning. They are not necessarily going to produce a lot of color in a dye pot, but I'm thinking we might be able to transfer some of that pink and maybe that yellow onto fiber to bring home. I, of course, have my two hammers. I have this beautiful old hammer that was my boyfriend's grandfather's hammer. I mean, how lovely is that? And then I have a slightly larger hammer as well, just to get a little more surface area. I'm gonna be hammering on this wooden table, but to protect it, I have just some plastic cutting boards that will just keep me from denting this. When I pound, of course, we have the fiber here. This is the cotton napkins that I always use. It's been pre-treated with aluminum acetate. This is actually my barrier cloth. So I'm gonna get a ghost print on this. Normally I would iron this, but since I don't have an iron, I'm just gonna have to wing it. I've got some tape today, and that is because I'm actually going to cut out a protected stencil. I'm going to make this print within a stenciled area just to do something a little different. So I have some scissors here that I'm gonna to use to make my stencil cutout. I'm going to do that on a piece of parchment paper. And in order to protect it going through, I will be placing a piece of this parchment paper inside of the bag so that I only get a print on the outside of the bag as well as on my barrier cloth, which is what is going to go between the hammer 
and the flowers. And this is the cotton bag that I'm gonna be using. It's just a simple tote. Again, unfortunately, it's gonna be rough. Normally, I would iron this nice and smooth. All right, let's get started. Since we are not using heat for this kind of printing, we're not gonna get that extra help from the heat itself. We're actually gonna be transferring the color that's in the flower to the surface and binding it just purely by smashing it into it. You are going to want to make sure that your fiber is pre-treated with a mordant because this is a cotton bag. I have pre-treated already with aluminum acetate, silk, wool, you can use alum, and just make sure you do that because your print is something you're gonna to wanna to keep and it may fade over time, but if you have that extra bonding help from a mordant on the fiber, it's just gonna last longer. Now, another thing you can do, and I have done this in a class recently, is do a post dip in iron. I don't have iron with me, so I won't be able to do that in this video, but that might be something we look at in the future. The shifting of colors that happened obviously changes it, but it also gives that extra mordant power at the end. But since I don't have that today, I won't. Never skip the mordant step. It just is really the secret to all successful dyeing, even printing. So let's put our barrier paper on the inside of the bag. We will tape the template to the outside and then we'll start working with our flowers. So do you remember doing this when you were a kid? I'm just gonna fold my template piece of paper in half and I'm simply going to cut out a heart shape with my scissors. And I should have a perfectly even heart. Let's see how I did. Not bad. Cute little heart. That should work perfectly. Of course, we're gonna be using this piece to leave that space on the bag where our flower print will be. Maybe it'll take the shape of a heart. Okay, so I've got my heart stencil down. Scotch tape's working just fine. It's just really to hold it somewhat in place so that I might be able to get a nice heart-shaped print when I'm pounding the flowers. Just an essence, we'll see if it works. And I've got my barrier paper on the inside, so now I need to work with my flowers. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so here are the flowers. They're really big and they also have a very large center piece that has a lot of pollen on it. So I can simply place these down flat like this and press this as much as I can. For sure we're gonna get some of this yellow color in it, but that might add a really nice sort of flex of color. You can also peel each individual petal off and place them in a flower shape or even just scatter them about. But I think I'm gonna try to keep them in this full state and see what I get. I will get some kind of a color from this as well. I could place them and then cut this off so that I have less of that green. That could translate as yellow, maybe green, or it could even turn to brown but I'll play around with it a little bit. My intention is to mix these different flowers next to each other, playing with differences of color and tone. So we've got these three. I think it could turn out really pretty. So let's start that. And if you remember from previous videos, we're gonna be using this cloth over the top to protect the hammer from destroying the flower itself. 
if I were to pound directly onto this, it would really decimate this. So by using a barrier cloth in between, I should be able to get a little bit more of the color out before the petal just gets destroyed by the pounding. Then we're gonna have the secondary print on here. So it's kind of a bonus, does two things, protects the flower itself during the hammering and then also gives you this awesome secondary print. So if you wanna use a piece of cloth that's finished like this one, then you have, you know, like a nice print. This piece was also pre-treated with aluminum acetate. So I knew going in that this piece could have the opportunity to be just another printed piece of fiber. Now you're welcome to make your design any way you want or to work with the flowers in those different ways, cutting the petals off, putting them as whole flowers. You can put all of your flowers down at once or you could pound one flower at a time so that you might have a little bit more control of where things go. Some people will put tape over the flower to keep it in place. I don't do that. I am not that worried about perfectionism or having be exact. So I'll probably work with one flower at a time and then make some creative choices or design choices on what flower to put next so that I can mix up the different colors and see if I can fill this heart-shaped space. Okay, first couple poundings, it's going through, but my surface is not stable enough. I have a wood table and then I have some protective covers over the top, but to be honest with you, I'm gonna move it inside and I'm gonna work on some marble top instead. The lighting isn't as good in there, so hopefully I'll still be able to film but the surface is really important. If you're having trouble getting that contact, then you might need to have something harder underneath where you're pounding. Yes, much better, harder surface. So I moved in to the kitchen area there and I'm pounding. It's on a marble type surface. It's making a lot of noise. And I live in an apartment building with a lot of other people. So I am going to pound a little more softly. I noticed that it's not going through really strong onto the cotton, but that's okay. I may end up with sort of a whispered effect meaning just a very light, sort of a watercolory look, and I'm okay with that. If you have no restrictions on noise and you wanna pound away, by all means do it. I'm also going back and forth between my two different hammers, and I'm finding that I can go back on areas in a very, very light but steady rhythm, and I'm getting more of that color coming out. So I think I will pull that up and put down the next flower. Okay, so I had to leave you behind on the rest of the design because it just was too hard actually. It shows you how you have to kind of go with things, right? So I moved from the wood table outside to the stone or granite countertop inside and I still wasn't getting like a lot of contact. So I came back outside and there is 
concrete on the ground, these concrete tiles, and I used those and actually it worked the best. So I'd like to show you what it looks like. And I wanna to talk to you about some things that I did from a design perspective. And that is part of this joy, right? That you start off in one way and maybe you decide to shift things, change things, turn things around. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm really happy that I felt like I had the freedom to do that. So, oh, I'm sorry that I didn't show things, but I'll explain to you a few little subtle changes that I made and we can see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the barrier cloth and I actually started moving it around, picking it up and turning it because I started to see a design coming through on this and I wanted to kind of expand out. Since I have a stencil underneath that's limiting where the prints actually go, I didn't want that same thing on the barrier cloth. So here is what it looks like. You can see that it was very light. I got sort of marks where the hammers were hitting. But what I started to do was as I saw empty spaces, like here, for example, I would just take off one petal, put it down and pound it just to kind of fill it in. And so I was able to add bits and pieces like this little mark here was just a petal that I put here and pounded it, but I laid this cloth over the top strategically so that I got, for example, the full petal. So I think it actually turned out really well. And now I've got two things very different from one another. I am going to remove the stencil, see what that looks like. Of course, I have to remove the petals from the cloth on the back side. But wow, we got some really dark colors on there. And let's see what it looks like when we peel off the stencil itself. Let's see if we got that heart shape. <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? Okay. Take off our little pieces of tape here. One-handed, it's always tricky. There we go. <laughs> Look, we did it. Right. So I have this great heart shape. I do see that a little piece went through down here, but you know, that's what happens. I'm gonna remove the tape and we'll take a look at it. There you have it, the final piece. You can see the very faint outline of a heart. We got some variations of color. We got a little bit of the internal yellow from the centers of the flowers. But we also got three really distinct colors with light, the super pink, which turned out to be quite orange, and then this bluish purple for the darkest ones. Looks really good. I'm quite happy with how that turned out. I took off all the flowers and look at just how pretty that is. It's so subtle, but it's got this really nice contrast of colors and forms. You can tell they're flowers, but it's not exact. It just really turned out pretty and it was fun to design something different than the heart as I was using this as my cloth. I'm really happy with it. One quick note, I will leave these as they are after removing the bits of plant material and just let them set. I'm not going to wash them for at least a week and then I'm just going to treat them really, really kindly and never put them in the dryer, use cold water to wash and so forth. I like to think of these kinds of prints as artwork and the way in which you might treat something a little bit more gently. As long as you've pre-treated it with a mortar, you should be good to go. Enjoy every single life that this color wants to bring to you. So I have two very different prints 
and something that I will be able to remember the time that I got to spend with my friend Tessa outside of her studio and just a little piece of something that is very very Dutch in the summertime and that is these sort of wild flower hollyhock that are everywhere in the city it's a beautiful juxtaposition of nature and urban man-made materials and beautiful organic shapes and colors and all that good stuff so a month here it's time for me to head back to the pacific northwest but next week on color quest we're going to take a quick detour and that is to the amazing desert region of Baja California in Mexico. Figured we'd continue a little bit more travel and some inspiration on how you might try to take a tiny slice and a tiny memory of natural color from when you travel as well. And this could be as close as your own backyard. I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoyed these past two weeks with me as I looked at Hollyhock in two very different ways. And I can't wait to see you in Baja next Friday on Ha, ha, ha.